Hey everyone, this is Elias from RefMatch Media, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 2022 Mazda CX-5 2.5 Turbo all-wheel drive. Now, this is really the middle child <laughs> of the Mazda line, but um, like Goldilocks found out, the middle bear was definitely just right. Let's go ahead and get started. We get started in the front and we can see this thing looks aggressive. I love this Mazda uh, styling language. It just looks really good. The headlights look so mean. Uh, really stand out with this vehicle. And talking about stand out, this red. This red is incredible. Uh, it just has so much depth to it. And it has this, this special red. It's, it has sparkle, but the thing is, I believe I believe this is the color that they actually use a red tint on the clear coat to give it that color pop uh, that it really has. So yeah, just be aware of, of officers because this is a cop magnet, <laughs> but it does look really good. We have this black grill here that looks really, really good. Um, I am confused by this guy here though. I don't know why we have little red accents. I don't know if this is a turbo thing or something, but uh, I don't remember that being there in the Mazda CX-30, no, three that we reviewed or even the uh, Mazda 3 hatch uh, that we reviewed. So yeah, that was a nice little touch though. Something extra, something different really. The black accents are always welcome. This front end just looks really, really good. Now let's go ahead and pop this hood and see what we have under there. We get under the hood and we have the 2.5 liter inline four turbocharged engine. It is cranking out 227 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. It is connected to a six speed auto and then to the all wheel drive system. Now this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I remember driving the Mazda 3 2.5 non-turbo and that was a blast. I remember driving the non-turbo uh, on the CX-3. That was fun. This, adding that additional power makes it even funner. <laughs> I guess you could say it makes it better. It makes it significantly better. And this is what this 2.5 really needed. It works really good. Uh, the transmission, eh, it's a little bit on the slower side. I, I wish it were a little bit more aggressive, especially in kind of the sport mode. Um, but that turbo is big. Like I could see it here and it takes up a large amount of space back here. Um, but this guy has been a lot of fun. It also sounds really good too. It does have a kind of a boxer engine, a uh, Subaru boxer engine uh, kind of rumble to it, which is nice. It's nice. Um, but when you want it to be quiet, it can definitely be quiet. Um, but the power delivery has been really good. I've enjoyed this power plant. Well, let's go ahead and see what we have in those wheels and tires. We get down to the wheel and tire package and we have this nice 19 inch high gloss black wheel. I love the design and it is wrapped in the 225-55 Toyo tire. Now, this thing has been incredible. First, it's really quiet, um, but you still have a ton of grip <laughs> with this setup. Also, it looks great. It looks great against this red, black and red, one of my favorite combinations really, um, but it just is a good setup. The brakes are really good as well. The pedal feels nice and meaty, it, you know, it feels confident confidence inducing so it's really good suspension is incredible the power delivery as well is really good uh, you can get these front wheels spinning a little bit but it immediately transfers the power to the rear uh, to get it going but yeah I mean this has been really good setup would I change this I don't think I would this this has a nice size and a nice design and a great color well let's go ahead and see what we have on the side we get to the side and we can see this red is scorching hot. <laughs> it really is. Not, and I'm glad I filmed this in the middle of the day so that you guys can see the sun hit this red because it looks so good. <sighs> I'm suffering a little bit, but it's worth the, the, uh, 
the suffering, so to speak. And a couple of things, we get started in the front and we can see that headlight kind of swooping a little bit over. Looks really good. I like that little kind of eye, mean eye look to it. We get to the wheels, we have the 19 inch wheels, which you can see with the proportions of this look really good. And the, you know, the gap here isn't too bad. It's a nice, nice layout overall. And then we have the gloss black trim, which looks really good again with that red combination. Uh, we don't have a camera system here. So it is only the uh, rear camera uh, that we have in this, but we have black mirrors, which look good. And then we have, uh, again, the door's just really big, the tail light sticking out a little bit, which we'll get into really nice line. But overall, I do like the side profile. Now I have the key fob in my pocket and I'm gonna go ahead and reach over and try to open and it's not gonna open because there is a little black button on this, which you'll have to go ahead and press to unlock and then you can go ahead and open. Now I'll go ahead and close this off and I, in order to lock it, all I have to do, because there is something that you have to program in your infotainment system, it will lock the moment that I step away. Uh, I didn't see anything that if you get close to it, it will turn on or unlock, which is kind of, hmm, uh, yeah, I don't know if, uh, help me out, YouTube, let me know if that is a function and maybe I missed it in the menu and uh, find out uh, right how to do that so other viewers can get that. But the other thing, rear, no nothing not gonna work so you do have to push the button and then it will unlock in order for you to open up yeah kind of a letdown i wish it had a sensor even just give me the button at at the minimum uh, but yeah you can go ahead and lock that there and now we can go to the back and see what we have there we get to the back and we have a nice looking rear to the cx5 Couple of things, we get started on the tail lights and I love this design. I love the fact that we have this black trim on top and the, head, the tail lights stick out a little bit from the body. It becomes part of the body line, which is really good. I, I love this design. Mazda, you guys nailed it with that. And a couple of things, we have the badging CX-5 all wheel drive. Let everyone know that all four wheels spin on this and a little bit more revealing, so to speak. We have the Skyactiv G badge as well as the turbo. So yeah, you splurged a little bit on it. Let everyone know you did. <laughs> so we have that. And then on the bottom, we have the exhaust tips and they are full real exhaust tips. So good on you Mazda, love that. So we'll go ahead and get the key fob. And with the key fob, I'll go ahead and hold this and it will open up the back hatch. And there is a ton of space back here. I love this. And I love that it's only a two row SUV and not a three row SUV to give me a really a half-assed three row SUV just for the sake of checking off that box. Thankfully, the CX-5 didn't. The CX-9 did unfortunately do that, which you guys can check out in my review. But you can see with this one, there is a ton of space back here. I love this because it becomes fully functional for what it is and not just a kind of okay uh, trunk area. And the other thing I really like about this is we do have a, uh, we do have a 20, 40, 60 split uh, with this. So we do have the option of really bringing down uh, three parts of the rear seat and it's all done through here or from the side as well So really love that uh, with this. So I'll go ahead and close this guy off and Now we'll go to my favorite part the key let's start Unfortunately, this does not have it. So there is no uh, remote start on this. It is done through the app, which gosh, and you have to have a subscription. No Mazda, just give it to me on the key fob. Because then at that point, if my wife has to borrow the car or I have to drop, use the car, if I have the key, I can start the car myself. I don't have to go into an app or anything like that. It's nice to have that as an option, but just add it to the key fob. So yeah, we're gonna have to hop in and uh, push that little start button. We get inside of the Mazda CX-5 and I feel at home. I remember this in the CX-30. I remember this in the Mazda 3. I remember this in the CX-9. Yeah, this is Mazda. 
this is high quality interiors. Great looking design. Let's get started. We get to the door and the door is nice. The armrest is nice and comfortable. The leather is, is top notch. It really is. This is now this is the black in full black interior. I would have liked the red because I've had the Mazda 3 with the red interior and that just looks so so good. Um, so yeah this one doesn't have it but it's still good. The black is still nice. Um, you know every every leather every surface just feels premium this ditching is so nice it is on the kind of darker uh, gray look to it again it would have just been nice with that red uh i know especially with this red ex exterior it definitely would have set it off really really good and we get to the seats and the seats are nice they're comfortable uh they are a little bit on the sportier side so uh it is hugging me a little bit uh on the sides but it's still comfortable um you know easy to adjust the one thing i was kind of confused was the set you know the memory setting it is actually on the on the left side as well um i was kind of looking for it everywhere and couldn't find it when it turns out it's on the door itself uh, i'm sorry on the seat itself seat itself it's on the seat <laughs> and the other thing is we have the uh, heated and cooled options so this is cooling me right now especially when it is 87 degrees outside as you can see from the very bright uh, sun but it's a really nice interior this the seats are really comfortable the cooling actually works it's really good at keeping me cool so definitely a nice touch to these seats we get over to the steering wheel and the steering wheel is all too familiar as well in the best of ways and this is where we see red stitching yes we see the red stitching on on the steering wheel the leather is really nice again really high premium leather and the uh the squishiness to it isn't quite there but it's fine it doesn't it i didn't need it i didn't want it um and the controls are really nice i do like the layout of this uh, we have all the volume and next track on the left um, and it makes it easy for you to you know switch from one to the other and the middle is kind of another button as well so it's a three in one kind of button which is nice actually uh, and the right hand side is your cruise control uh, options as well really good feeling the shape is beautiful we have paddle shifters in the back uh, it's just nice it really really is nice then we get to the gauge cluster and this is where it suffers a little bit. I guess I'm just wanting more from it just because everything else is so good. We do have analog gauges. We have analog tach tachometer. We have analog uh, temperature gauge as well as fuel gauge. In the middle, we have a speedometer that is digital and it does have like, you know, it, in the digital, it's a digital analog gauge because it is still a digital needle um, and then in the middle we do have info but we don't have much info we literally have a trip a trip b uh, the distance in front of you uh, when service is due your uh, you know how many miles you have to an empty tank and the compass that's really it or off yeah it's a little lacking I wish this had a little bit more, especially with the fact that this is such a fun little vehicle. Uh, I wish there was more. I don't know, maybe oh, a boost gauge in there, maybe uh, a timer like all GM cars appear to have, even though it's a massive SUV and it doesn't really warrant a timer, uh, you know, a lap timer, I guess. But just something, something else besides those little items. So I was a little let down by that. Then we get over to the infotainment system and this has the Bose uh, system. It is really good. Uh, and I don't usually like Bose, but it's very well tuned in this. So I do like the way it sounds in this. The thing with the infotainment system, I love the big screen that's wide. I like the wide screen. <laughs> you see what's not happening there? Yeah the touch it's not touch screen this is probably one of the very few screens that i'm like this needs to be touch screen but it's not and what's crazy is that it's like so close to me too that i can touch it to warrant to, to want that yeah mazda i know you guys have fought it 
and I've read the comments, I've read everything of people wanting it because it's so good to like want you to touch. It's very clear, it's very bright. Uh, even with the sun hitting it right now, no issues there. We then get to the AC controls and the AC controls are really simple, very straight to the point, really love them. No confusion as to what you want it to do. So good, good on your Mazda, keeping it simple there. We get down to the wireless charger and the wireless charger has, nah, I don't know, hasn't impressed me. Uh, yesterday I was driving it and it was flashing red. There was nothing on it, nothing obstructing it. I put my phone in and it was still flashing red. It wouldn't charge. Yeah, and and it is at kind of a, a an angle like that uh, with a little bit of a lip. What's crazy is that I thought that wasn't gonna be a good design, but it works. It hasn't like flopped my phone over. Granted, I haven't had to break really hard in this, but yeah, it, it's fine when it works. <laughs> <laughs> so you may want to consider not optioning that out. Then we come back here to the shifter. Shifter is nice and comfortable, nice leather. Again, great material. Uh, we do have the option of going into the manual gears. It's really just a, yeah, I don't know what it really is because it won't, <laughs> it won't hold the gear. Actually it will. Yeah, it will hold the gear. Um, but yeah, uh, I've left it in drive. It's been fine the whole time. Then we have the MI or the, or the yeah, MI or me drive or my drive, my drive, yeah. I don't know which one it is. You guys tell me, <laughs> but it's basically to change your mode. So you have off-road, you have normal, and then you have sport as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and leave it on normal. We'll get to sport soon. We come back a little bit more. We have your electronic uh, parking brake. We have your auto hold. And then we have what I like to call the little command center. The command center has been really good. I like the fact that you have kind of the shape of what your fingers would be. So it really, you know, you can literally uh, place one finger on each button and it will lay there perfectly. Yeah, so ergonomically is very well done. Now the, the wheel though, uh, it just leaves a little bit more to be desired when I want to literally go to something over here and I'm having to kind of like, okay, go through all of those, all of these buttons to really get to that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, we do have some shortcuts so we can go to kind of, uh, you know, press the home. But if I want to go to the Mazda thing, you do have the option also it's not just a spinning wheel, but it's also up, down, left, right kind of thing. Um, so at least it has that. It's been okay. Like I said, my wife really just, she said the same thing as me. She's like, I wish, she's like, it's such a welcoming screen. I want to touch it and I hate touch screens. That's literally what she said. So maybe, maybe we can convince you Mazda uh, to change that. And then we have the volume knob. The volume knob has been really good. I've actually preferred this volume knob over, sorry, we don't wanna get uh, <laughs> striked by, or struck by uh, YouTube royalties, so to speak. Um, but yeah, the this little knob has been more welcoming than the steering wheel button. I keep forgetting it's on the steering wheel. Yeah, it's been nice. Then we come back to the cup holders and the cup holders have been good. No complaints there, It you know, fits your cup no no issues uh yeah not a concern then we get a little bit more back and we have the armrest the armrest has been okay i mean it's it's a little bit on the shorter side um granted my seat is a little bit more forward um but yeah it's been it's been fine uh the one thing i do love is the fact that you do have the wild the usb charger in there and it has a little channel which is what i've been using in order to get the phone uh, charging. Yes, uh, typically we have them in the front, but I've actually liked it in back here because it's been out of my way. I haven't had to really kind of reach for anything or have a clutter here. Let the clutter be behind and I can put the phone inside of the, um, inside of the armrest itself, but I've just had it in the cup holder. So yeah, it's been, it's been fine at that point there. We get to the back and this is a two row SUV. Yes, we don't have three rows, 
but we don't want three rows because three rows for some reason in smaller SUVs or mid-size SUVs really don't work. But this works. So it's, and that's why I love the CX-5 so much because it's right in the middle. It's like the, uh, you know, the, the three bears, Goldilocks and three bears, the middle one's always the best one. Yeah, I think this fits for this because we have a second row, a rear seat that is just massive. There's a ton of space back there, extremely comfortable. And uh, yeah, we can only sit, sit five people in here or, uh, you know, compared to the CX-9, which you can do four, five, six, seven, I believe, but those seven won't be comfortable. Only the first four will. <laughs> and we do have a ton of space in the trunk. So yeah it's really the in between it's really the perfect kind of thing for this which i love it's definitely what you want to have now if you are going to be hauling people sure get the cx9 yeah whatever um but <laughs> for me the cx5 is the perfect size now let's talk performance we're dealing with the 2.5 liter inline four turbocharged and that is cranking out 227 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque it is connected to the six-speed auto and then to the uh, all-wheel drive system from Mazda. Now, let's just say this thing is a blast. Well, first, it sounds mean. It's a little four-cylinder, but man, does it sound mean. And what I love about this is grip, traction. There is so much traction in this. So we'll go from a stop. So traction control kicked in there and it just sounds really good. I was really impressed with kind of the growl that you can get with this guy. Now we'll go ahead and put it into sport mode and yeah, it's just really, really good. Now the only thing though that I am seeing is that it does shift a little bit earlier than what the red line really does even if you put it in manual mode it's not gonna let you like really get up to the 6,000 rpm red line but it, it does have kind of a boxer uh engine to a boxer sound engine to it which is nice i mean it, it does have its little growl and it has some pep to it it really does uh, I'm, I am impressed with how good this little guy can perform. The other thing though is the suspension. The suspension is so good. The chassis, so it's not even ch the suspension, but the chassis in this is so well done that it feels like a sports car. It feels like my Miata. It feels like it has that feeling. It's so good. And the steering feel is incredible as well. I've been surprised at how good this wheel feels uh you know with getting it uh you know through some turns it's just <laughs> and the turbo really spools up and really gets this big guy going the brakes the brakes are really good as well it's just a really good <laughs> it's just a really good little cuv i mean it's uh, maybe even a suv i guess you could call it but it's it's impressive it really feels like a sports car that just happens to be a little bit bigger. It's like having that, uh, you know, that tight end that <laughs> that is big, can block, but is just as nimble as a wide receiver. It's crazy. It's just, the road feel is so good. The steering feedback is incredible. Just the noises as well. It's just a really good, SUV. It's a good vehicle. It's a good sports vehicle. Yeah, sport utility vehicle. It really is. <laughs> I've been super impressed with this and I have been loving this guy. Well, uh, I really think the CX-5 is the perfect middle ground to everything because it does everything really, really good. And yeah, it's just a really good overall package. Now, what else would I get beside this? Hmm, I don't know. I mean, the other thing I would really kind of compare this with is really the GMC Terrain AT4 that we had. 
it, it's kind of that same size. It's got the, it's got that feel. It's got a feeling. It's got, it's got something special to it. It's got a soul. Uh, and yeah, I think that's, that would be the other one that I would really, uh, consider. Um, and my wife and I were talking about it. We're like, mm, what do we, you know, which one should we get kind of thing? Uh, this is high up there, but I think the GMC is, I don't know. I just wish this could tow more because then that would be the total package and I could tow the Miata. I could really tow the Miata with this, but this has been a blast. I've had a lot of fun driving this. Um, yeah, I, I can't think of anything else really. What things I can improve on? The, info, the infotainment system, give me a touch screen and maybe the gauge cluster, change it up a little bit. Give me some, some pizzazz, some, give me some more life, give me something great. But again, the big thing with this is it doesn't have those little gimmicks to make it a great car. It has those bad things and it's still a great vehicle as opposed to other vehicles that are bad and have those little gimmicks that make it okay. Yeah, yeah, that's really what this is. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Mazda CX-5 and remember, find the right gear. See ya.